The following telephone recordings are from the period November 1975 through March 1976. This narration was done in 2016. I'll be narrating the listener as if in real time through an old exploration of a now long-defunct telephone network owned by an independent telephone company which still exists, although the network being described here was replaced during either the 1980s or the early 1990s. None of the techniques described here have anything to do with present-day networks. In August of 1974, I've been calling up to the 914 area of New York State to record the sound of the calls going through. I called a lot of bell system places. Please dial 1 plus 555-1212. Or ask your operator for assistance, or temporarily disconnected. And a lot of independent places. This is a recording from Highland Hills, New York. The call cannot be completed as dialed. Please. This is a recording at Barryville, New York. 91412. And one of the things I found was a really small independent company called the Warwick Valley Telephone Company. This is a recording from Warwick, New York. They were so mom and pop, so to speak, that they were providing a free information recording for the local school district. This is a recording at Warwick Valley High School giving the schedule of locally developed exams. They had a step-by-step -step switch, which was obvious when I called it from my newer 887 line. But that has recently changed as of December 1975. Now they have some sort of a modern switch, one of the switch types that independent companies use. You can tell because White Plains is sending MF to the new Warwick switch. You have dialed a non-working number. And it also has brand new trunks that are 2600 controlled. So I can MF into the Warwick switch. Unfortunately, when I MF anything but Warwick area numbers and operators, it's restricted. This is recording. We cannot complete your call as dialed. But it turns out that Warwick has a second switching machine. It's an NX1 crossbar switch that only handles their operator services. Warwick. TSD, Traffic Service Desk. Warwick. By calling the inward operator. And then, instead of letting it go through, ringing forward a few times while the TSD switch is trying to set up the call. I can reset the TSD switch and MF into it. Not much that you MF into that switch works. In fact, for a while there, I was getting an MF sender that had to be coaxed along to send out the number only to give up before sending the last digit. Finally, I realized that just sending any number at all, except New York, and then just waiting, was good enough to get the TSD to dump me into the new Warwick electronic switch, except from this angle it's unrestricted so I can call anything in the world. And when I called myself back, turned out the answer signal was not coming back and so what we have here is what the phone freaks call a goody tandem. It's a link you can go through to make a call to anywhere in the world 
but it blocks the answer supervision from reaching you. That means you don't have to worry about being charged for a long distance call or having suspicious records on your AMA tape of calls to toll-free numbers. Those suspicious records on the AMA tape are what the security agents used to detect people who were using blue boxes in the 1970s. Of course, I don't actually have a blue box. I've got an... Arp Odyssey synthesizer, but it works just as well. The recording that follows, I wish, could be restored as easily as I restored those old synthesizer jingles. But this one just has too much hum for me to remove it completely without adding artifacts to the material. So it's going to be a little hummy. This is a brief demonstration of the Warwick Goody Tandem done through Syracuse 4A. The reason I used Syracuse is that it's a true long-distance call, not a short long-distance call. It's far enough away to demonstrate that this newly discovered Warwick Goody Tandem can be used from anywhere in the domestic network, that includes Canada, without guard band. Now, guard band is a phone freak technique that is very touchy to get right. And the other three goody tandems that we know about, Peekskill, Riverhead, and Olean, all require that you use guard band. Peekskill used to be usable without guard band, and the freaks knew about it, but it changed sometime in the mid-70s and probably not as a reaction to phone freaking. By 1975, to use the peak skill goody tandem, you had to use guard band. And actually, there's a tape of doing that in the programs called Hi-Fi 914. Those are really good. It explains a lot of phone freak techniques, and it's high-quality recording. Not like this one. The first thing I'm going to do is make a long-distance call to the 315 area of New York that goes out through Hempstead to Syracuse. <laughs> Before the call could go through, I whistled 2600 and keyed in a vacant code. We're sorry, but we have a problem in completing your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or ask your operator to help you. This is a recording. 3154. Well, the way she pronounces have sounds like it rhymes with the capital of Ukraine. Kiev, Kiev. That shows she's upstate. 3154, however, means more specifically Syracuse. Now I'm going to call Warwick Inward, 914-039-121. Warwick. Ah, well, she started to answer there and fast, too. Coming in from Syracuse, the timing has to be different, and it's kind of hard to get it right because we are literally two steps removed from the new Warwick switch. But repeated attempts will get this. Whoa. I shouldn't have disconnected that so fast. That was the old Warwick step ring. Apparently, something about my repeatedly ringing forward got the TSD to give me that. Okay, I rang forward. Had to use a different rhythm. The TSD is now listening. I'm keying a random, non-New York number, of course. The TSD has gotten us a trunk, and when it puts us on it, I'll call my number. Uh, 
Syracuse. All I have to do is go 914-039-121. And then take it from there and do the same thing. So no guard band required, just some tricky flashing. Yes, and your entire technique is absurd. I think I'm going to put you on this line. Switching the tape recorder to the incoming line. Okay, we're souped over here. I'm going to unsoup. And talk to you through this line. What is it with this cheap I get when I go off hook? That. That last was a hang up. It's supposed to cheap there, but when I go off hook. Uh uh. Believe it or not, that has nothing to do with the Goody Tandem. It's something that we get calling back to the New York area from 914. Ben was commenting on it on the last program, and in the Hi Fi 914 series, there's an instance where I get a connection like this. Anyway, I'm now going to ring forward from the calling end, and you'll see the momentary on hook goes all the way down the line. Last through. Just so you know what that is, I'm sending a single burst of 2600 from the calling end, and each link along the way passes it down the line. Isn't that cool? That's just one beep of my Arp Odyssey. The trunk from Hempstead to Syracuse responds to it, then Syracuse passes it along to White Plains, which passes it to Warwick, and then within Warwick it, well, it doesn't use 2600 to communicate with the TSD and back. And then from Warwick it goes to White Plains, which sends it to Hempstead Tandem 1 or 2, which goes over a wire trunk to me. Anyway, now I'm going to hang up the calling end, and you'll hear a total of five 2,600 cheeps. The Warwick Goody Tandem worked pretty well, but it did have a small glitch. You could count on it to protect you from having the answer signal reach you, so for most purposes, it was fine. But sometimes you want to use a goody tandem to hold up someone as a prank or to hold some test line or a trunk that's going to go off and on hook. And for that, Warwick wasn't 100% reliable. Here's an example. It doesn't always work this way, but let me explain it. I've hung up on myself, and normally I'll wait three minutes, even, with the tape running just to prove that, yes, it holds indefinitely. But this time, after about 15 seconds, there, that was the sound of one of the Warwick switches disconnecting the trunk, perhaps resetting it to wait for digits again. Let's stay on the line to see if this trunk has been reset such that there's a switch listening for digits by the type of reorder tone or click that it makes and how long the timeout is we can determine what kind of a switch it is and therefore tell what happened from the way that reorder ticked on and the way it sounded and the fact that the timeout was 33, not 30, but 33 seconds, I can tell you the following. That was the new Warwick switch waiting for digits. I'm not sure it was responsible for the reset. The TSD might have done that. But when the reset occurred 15 seconds after I hung up, the new Warwick switch was once again listening for digits. This is the glitch. Every now and then this happens. Most of the time it doesn't, and I'm not sure that there's any rhyme or reason to when it does. So the Warwick Goody Tandem is very useful for exploring the network and not worrying about charges or suspicious records to toll-free calls, but for holding people up as a prank, well, you might have to try more than once, let's just put it that way. Now, 33 seconds is a very special time. 
1975, I didn't know this, but my phone trips during 1976 and 77 solidified the fact that there's only one switch that has a 33-second timeout, and that is the Stromberg Carlson ESC. The ESC is that Stromberg Carlson electronic switch with the fast dial tone and the funny MS. And the new Warwick switch is, as it turns out, one version of the Stromberg ESC. Now, they didn't call it that. When we asked them, they called it a PL1, meaning Programming Language 1. But as you'll see later in this series, it really is an ESC. And that 33-second timeout, the ESCs have that, specifically 33 seconds for the dial tone and everything else. But in 1975, the only ESC I'd even dealt with was... The number you have reached in Hoadley, Virginia, is not in service or has been changed. If you need assistance, please hang up and dial directory assistance. This is a recording. Yeah, how's it going? All right. Never dialed from it. I just called into it locally, and then when I called into it long distance one day, we had that crosstalk condition. My first ESC was um, Chancellor, Virginia, in August 1976. Anyway, here's a moderate quality call where I'm testing the Warwick Goody tandem to make sure that the timeout isn't going to happen every time. This begins with a normal call to a non-working thousand group in Pine Island, New York, one of Warwick's steppe tributaries. White Plains MFs to the Warwick ESC, which then dial pulses silently to Pine Island. This reorder tone's coming from Pine Island, one of Warwick Valley Telephone Company's step tributaries. If I were to juice right now, I would reset White Plains 1, good old 9144. But instead I'll use 2600, that's going to reset the Warwick ESC. After that, I'll dial a vacant code, just to make sure we are getting the Warwick recording. Then I'll reset the trunk again, and, well, you know the drill. Call inward, mess it up, dial something random, wait for the flash, and then on the unrestricted Warwick ESC, I'll call myself. This is recording. We cannot complete your call as dialed. Please consult your directory or ask your operator for assistance. Oops, that doorbell sound means someone's calling me. Hold on while I... No, they're not there. Never mind. Oops, it happened again. We're now on the ESC, which is waiting for digits. And it's going to give me 33 seconds to key a number or time me out to the reorder again. I'll call myself again. What's really odd about this is that I re-keyed my number on the very same connection where that disconnect happened 
and this time it's going to work. So it really is quite random, like so many things involving this TSD. Where did they get that thing? It must have been seriously used or something. Anyway, while we're waiting to test Goody Tandem number four, I might as well use this time to tell you about the history of Goody Tandem number one, Peekskill, New York's Crossbar 5 Tandem. It was discovered by Bill Acker, who did a lot of playing around in the 914 area. And what he found was that Peekskill, unlike this new Warwick switch, was very accommodating if you gave it a number outside the Peekskill long distance sector. Now coming in from a place like White Plains Tandem 2, the regional 9141, there would be no reason to go into Peekskill and then go out again to something beyond the Peekskill sector. So if you did that, you were doing something abnormal. But Peekskill allowed the call to go through, and as an added bonus, it would not send along the supervision. We think this had to do with Peekskill using the wrong kind of trunk circuit to make the call out, which was quite understandable because there really shouldn't have been any network arrangement at all to come in from White Plains 2 and go out again. Now there was a practical problem which was that you could only get so many digits through White Plains 2. The limit was 11 digits. You needed to go 027, that was the code for Peekskill, and then you had eight digits left to send to Peekskill itself. Well, that's not enough for an area code and a phone number. But Bill figured out how to get around this. On a trunk to White Plains, he would send 027 plus 914 plus 099. What that would do is it would make White Plains send 914099 to Peekskill. Peekskill would then see the 914 and say, Oh, well, that's got to go to White Plains Tandem 1. It's the 914 specialist. And so it would pick up a trunk to White Plains 1 and put you on it, no supervision, and send the 099. White Plains 1 knew that 099 was the code for Poughkeepsie. But with no digits following, White Plains 1 just stacked into Poughkeepsie. So now, through the Goody Tandem, you had Poughkeepsie waiting for digits, into which you could then key any 10 or 11 digit number you wanted. That sequence, 027-914-099, became so famous among the old phone freak clan that Captain Crunch, in a 2016 conversation with me, brought it up and he remembered the exact sequence. Sometime around 1974, Peekskill was modified so that that famous ditty... That's Bill playing it on his blue box, stopped working. But through Guardband, you could still use the Peekskill goodie. There you have it. Let me put you on the incoming line. And hang up. I mean, I hang up the incoming line, not the calling line. Hanging up the incoming line doesn't mean much if you're on a goodie tandem, but it changes the way the connection sounds. You can hear the beating 2600s. Okay, now I'm going to uh, flash your line a few times. Now the incoming line is off hook, and you still hear 26, you just don't hear it beating. Like that. Goes cheap on the off hook again. So weird. Now I'm going to start ringing forward a lot. Before we go any further, I want to play a few snippets from NX1s in various parts of the country to highlight something that NX1s are known to do. Here, for example, I'm MFing on a 201 area crossbar tandem, and I put in the code for Oxford, New Jersey, plus one more digit. The crossbar tandem I'm using MFs to the Belvedere NX1, and what happens after that, well, you'll hear.
We just heard Belvedere NX-1 dialing a zero to Oxford, but the sender's hanging. Until... At this time, if you need assistance, please hang up and dial your operator. This is a recording. One, two. Hello, this is Oxford Telephone. Please hang up and dial your operator. This is a recording. One, two. So let's see. Um, this is Bill in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Let me dial 451 and demonstrate the NX1 how it tandems out. I'll dial 451-1117 fairly quickly. Hello, thank you for calling this service, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Time 16, 31, temperature 70. Just a short down up. Drops it, and I'm in 451 directly. Watch what happens when I dial 1119. I've just dialed 8 from Farmville, North Carolina. That goes into the main Greenville NX-1 office, and I'm dialing a number served by the other Greenville NX-1-756. When the call starts to complete, I'm going to flash. Seems we've been left on the 756 trunk, which we would expect is going to time out. However, What these three examples have in common is that each one features an NX-1 superimposing a busy signal or a reorder over one of its outgoing trunks when something odd happened. Okay, now back to Warwick. There was one more aspect of the Warwick Goody tandem that I haven't covered yet, but it certainly deserves mention here. Now, the process we used to do, where we would key some random long-distance number, not New York City, in order to set up the Warwick TSD to give us a trunk back to the ESC, didn't always appear to work. You have dialed a non-working number. Please consult your directory or ask your operator for assistance. All right, I dialed something random, not New York, and oh well, you know, the truth is. It does this a lot. So, of course, you just have to try again when this happens, right? Wait a minute. You don't think. Nah. Well, I guess it's worth a try.
Switching the tape recorder back to the outgoing line. You can stack anything, provided you don't mind having a reorder superimposed over the call. Now I'll stop the tape and switch to the other line. Okay, you're on the incoming line now. And now I'm going to hang up the calling line. After the day in which those recordings were made, Ben began playing with Warwick too, and he discovered a refinement to the ridiculous technique. Remember, what we're doing here is we're starting out with the Warwick ESC being restricted, but we're getting around the restriction of the ESC by going into the TSD to then come back into the ESC. Hey, you want me to use the long names for these things? Anyway, an essential part of the technique is getting the TSD to listen to our MFs. Now, my way of doing it was to start on the restricted Warwick ESC, as you always do. You have dialed a non-working number. Please consult your directory or ask your operator for assistance. Then start a call to Warwick inward, but interfere with the TSD getting us the operator. You have dialed a non- And that causes a flash handshake. The TSD listens for digits. We can then dial the random long distance number or if we want New York, just a New York number, and we'll end up with a goody tandem call. The key to this was to ring forward while the TSD was trying to get us the operator, like this. It reset with a flash handshake, and now it's waiting for digits. Now Ben's method is a lot better. You have dialed a non-working number. Please consult your directory or ask your operator for assistance. Just as with my method, it starts with the call to Warwick inward, but then, there, right after the start tone, I sent a burst of 2600, just a very short time after the start, and believe it or not, the TSD is waiting for digits, watch this. See that? It heard me. I dial the random area code, and it's doing the usual thing. Did you hear that? He put his ring trip on at the end of the ring, but it didn't. There, that's a trip. You have reached. You can soup. Go ahead. I can? Yes. I see. Where's that? Come out. Okay. Okay, sound much better now. Say a few words. I've been getting trucks on here that time out occasionally. Uh -huh. More than occasionally. Really? Using what method? Using the reorder or keying in directly or? 201. Using 201. I've only had it happen two out of about 20 times. Well, I don't know. It happens just when you don't want it to anyway. Well, of course. Well, let me record calling you through 201 now. Okay. Oh, first I'll call you directly through Burrow. Let me flash a little. Okay. Okay, call me through Burrow. Okay, here comes another Rube Goldberg. Now, just for fun, I'm going to use Juice to reset my trunk to White Plains 1. And key the Warwick office code 986. Reset Warwick with 2600. 
Now on Restricted Warwick, KP-121 start, ring forward. That's Ben's method. Now on the TSD, KP-212 start. TSD sent 212 to ESC, which stacked into Burrow Tandem. Now on Burrow Tandem, Ben's number. Hello. I love this. Oh, you got the goodie. Yeah, flash a little bit. How little? Flash a lot. Oh, a lot? I don't want it. Stay souped a while, then, then unsoup. Oh, okay. How does that strike you? Okay, I'll just hold on a while. Okay. Number at the Goody Town Department of Sanitation. <laughs> Goody Town Department of Sanitation. This one's called Goody Tandem 4. Right. Please dissect your control three. That's good. Yes. Please dissect your control three. It's not quite right. However, you could change it slightly and it would be right. Well. Well, I think we can safely assume that this is either a Goody Tandem or that I have crossbar one type holding power. Correct. How are you going to call me next? Uh, 201. Okay, fine. Good. I juiced off White Plains. Turns out the TSD can accept the routing code for Rochelle Park, New Jersey, 201036. So first, here's the Warwick Office Code 986. Now whistle off Warwick. Then Ben's method. Now on the TSD, 201036. That went through and the ESC stacked. And there's Ben's 10 digits. which Rochelle Park sent to Burrow Tandem, and you could tell from that gonging that Burrow Tandem was revertive pulsing to Ben's office. Your transmission is pretty good, but the supervision is so distant I can't even tell whether you're souped or unsouped. I know. It's like they hide the supervision from you. <laughs> what supervision? I don't have any supervision. Do you expect the time out? Are you souped? No, I was I was unsouped already. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> we will see you around when you get your dial tone. You won't get your dial tone, will you? I guess not. Uh, no, I won't. Oh, well, I guess that's the way the proverbial ball rolls. The worst thing I'd get is my reorder. Yes. Yes, that's true. Number. 
No, it looks like it's fine. It passed out like in 10 or 20 seconds, something short. Mm-hmm. But it's no problem, yeah. You're know, off the split of time drop by now anyway. So therefore, we must conclude that this is a good experiment. Okay, now I'll try to call you. Oh, let me re let me record keying your entire number into the TSD. I don't think I recorded that. So I'm going to blow 2600 to reset the restricted Warwick. Then, KP121 start ring forward. That's Ben's method for dropping onto the TSD. And then I'll key Ben's entire 10-digit number into the TSD. You'll then hear the TSD MFing that to the unrestricted Warwick ESC, which then MFs seven digits to Burrow Tandem, but the ESC MFs sound kind of funny, just like when we're originating from an ESC, and then Burrow Tandem will complete to Ben. Here goes. Okay. connection this time. Yes, it certainly is. This is this is a goodie call. We've got to prove this. Hang up now because my tape's going to run out. Oh, okay. I'll hang up now. I hear the 26 is beating. This connection is so loud for it to be a goodie tent. It's kind of inconceivable. It's, I mean, very, it's very enjoyable sound, too. Yeah. Maybe that means we're going to time out on the tandem, that is. Yeah, well, that the only coincidence. I guess not. Very good. Sounds great on this end, that 26 beating and everything. Oh, it's really great. It's such a delicious sound. I could talk for hours on this. It's a real call. Yep. Wow, they don't make them like this anymore. I know. Even through all this independent garbage, it's still a real call. Whoa. Now there's the Bill Acker influence showing up there. I disagree with that statement, but it was made just around the time I got my driver's license and I hadn't made any wonderful phone trips through independent territory yet. I certainly don't feel that way now. Yeah, what do independents use for carriers? The same kind of things, except they're a little, you know, outdated. They have a lot more open wire carriers. It's because they're, you know, they're a few steps earlier. Well, what type of carrier is that? I think it's called O Carrier. The various other weird. Yeah, like O N. I know. I heard about that. O N. I think. You know what I think O N is? The end carrier that hisses. You mean like from Staten Island from Seven A One? This regular N One, I think. But I think O N Carrier is sounds sort of like N One, but a sort of <laughs> sound to it. And every time there's any sound on the line, it sort of makes a metallic kind of. Yes, you know. Oh, that, yeah. Have you ever had an Etch-a-Sketch? Yeah. You know the sound, the, the grain? Right. The, that, it makes that kind of sound. I can't believe that they're actually going to carrier. I guess it makes sense, though, that everybody feels that you can't do that much with radio carrier, and that uh, it makes noises and all this. I guess that's why they don't want it. And, and let's face it, when Bell Labs tests out their T-Carrier, it sounds great to them. And I would, I agree with them. When T-Carrier is brand new, adjusted right, it's the best thing for speech. But, but it prevents, uh... Real conversation. It does. They don't realize that. They don't, feel, they don't know what it feels like to talk through a, uh, how should we say, a, chop, a choppy amplifier. Yeah, it's as if the tea carrier, only the words come through. You can't just curl up with a good tea carrier connection and talk to somebody, like your girlfriend or something. You just can't do it. Anyway. I should have souped during this conversation. Yeah, go ahead, soup. It, it would be louder. Go ahead, soup. Take advantage of the conversation. I'll be good. Okay. So hard to tell the difference, you know? Oh, it's a one, one, 126 link or something.
It's so damn loud. Oh, I mean, this is wonderful. I just... Now, which one is this? This is number this is four. This is number four. But you, you, you reduced the crew, right? I did, but I didn't need to. I could have dialed 986 direct and gotten the same thing. Exactly. Oh, you, you My mean, first SF link is to the thingy. Oh, wait a second. Uh, 986, doesn't that go to Hempstead? No, we send all of 914 through White Plains 1. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, but let me tell you, it is. Do you know that in August 1974, I recorded my 593 White Plains routing? But I recorded even more 887, because, you know, 887 is a lot of unmuted N1 and a few N3. But what about uh, supervision testing and some disease? You did that? I didn't do too much of that, because I don't know the codes for the soup tests and other than downstate areas, and there's so many independents. So there are not many soup tests, it's mainly rings and either stuff. I'll keep recording 914 routings. Uh, we'll get enough of it, so I... Yeah. God, I was thinking before when we were on 923, just thinking about that. It's not just what I was saying about this thing's going to be a whole away. It's going to be... It can't be saved, you know? Even recording it, I was thinking that the thing to do is to record a lot of this kind of carrier noise and then just play it while we're talking, you know, one day in the future. Yeah. It, just to have company, you know? Is that crazy? I don't know. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many different sounding M3s and M2s. They really do sound really different. So, I'd like to find out the difference between them and be able to identify them. Yeah, well, I wonder because, you know, I hear N2, I hear N2s or M3s that sound very N1-like, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. And then you get others that sound like L carrier, well, not, not so much, only in the sense that they're more noisy, and not only because of the 26, you know, there's a certain kind of, you know, pink noise to it, white noise. Yeah. Yeah, Forest Hills has all sorts of nice things. Oh, you got to record Forest Hills. I know. I need tape. I need lots and lots of tapes of it. I know, I know. I mean, I need lots, and then I can't be stopped. I can't put things off. I can't forget. And you just got to give it, I just got to sit down and just do it until I, until... I use up all the tape, and then you give me a new batch, and then... I need tape, too, you know, uh, all the tapes I have waiting to be dubbed will fill the tapes I have now. Yes. Anyway, let me stop this tape, for God's sake. Wow, I'd forgotten how it felt in those days, knowing all this great stuff was going. Of course, now... There's no problem because you guys can enjoy lots and lots of tapes. But there we were on the real thing in real time, very aware that it was going and that the clock was ticking. And we were teenagers. We didn't have unlimited money to buy tape in those days. Now, getting back to something I wanted to explain earlier, but Ben and I just kept making that string of phone calls this way and that way and through New Jersey and through Borough. I never explained how it is that Ben's method works. Seems kind of mysterious, doesn't it? I mean, all he does is start on the restricted Warwick ESC and go... KP-121, start, ring forward, and here we are on the TSD. And you know it's listening, because... Hear the way it clicks? After each digit? How on earth does this work? Well, it turns out that the Stromberg-Carlson ESC, at least at the tandem level, shares a characteristic with several other switch types, including senderized step, panel, and NX1. That characteristic is that when the switch is about to send out MFs, you can cause it to drop right into the trunk before MFing just by doing a momentary on-hook. Here's a long-distance call being originated from the Greenville, North Carolina, NX1. Greenville had started MFing to the Fayetteville 4A, but I flashed my hook switch in the middle of the MFs, and here we are sitting on the Fayetteville trunk. Had I flashed before the MF started, that would have left us in a position to key whatever we wanted into Fayetteville. I'm sorry, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is the recording, 9197. 
So that's the secret of Ben's method. He rings forward, which is the equivalent of my switchhook flash in Greenville. So instead of interfering with the TSD as I did, he interferes with the ESC before it can MF to the TSD. Shut up. I can guarantee you that there are people in the 21st century who do want to know how that worked. I couldn't leave him hanging. Anyone you want me to hold up? Or held up, for that matter. And speaking of that, I do have one more thing to confess before I close out this chapter on the Warwick Goody tandem. On the day that I found the thing, there was one more person that we did try to hold up. Okay. Bye-bye. 964-9041 or 965-4210. Right. Right, bye. Four one five nine six four nine zero four one. Unfortunately, there are very few people still alive who remember that phone number. That's the Berkeley phone number of Captain Crunch. We thought he would react interestingly if we held him up for a little while on the Goody Tandem, because he knew about peak skill. But he wasn't home, and we didn't try again. The Warwick Goody Tandem, I don't think, ever got used in a harassing way. Go figure. Anyway, that's it for this segment. The next one is a phone trip to the 914 area in February 1977. In the interim time, I leave my childhood home because my mom sold the house, and we moved to West 73rd Street, Manhattan, where I was living across the street from the CO. The next program is an escape from New York City to an independent company in 914.